How many tools and devices are you carrying in your bag when you go to do a Wi-Fi assessment or to troubleshoot Wi-Fi? Uh, I've been looking at minimizing and limiting how many devices I carry because it's starting to fill up my bag pretty bit, uh, a bit. And so what I started looking at is this NetAlly Etherscope NXG, which is a handheld Wi-Fi tool, which can do a lot of different things and consolidate the number of devices that I'm carrying. So after using this for a couple of months, I wanted to share some of my favorite features of the Etherscope NXG. So what I'm going to do is share my screen and take a look at the Etherscope here. My first feature that I want to share is the auto test. Now the auto test is a, a great way to just tap on start and run a test to gather a lot of different things. This is the screen that you see here where I have a demo profile group that is going to run uh, two other profiles to, to collect data. You can configure your own um, profile groups if you want. You can have multiple, which is useful if you're going into different environments. and Maybe you go into those environments regularly, so there's a specific test that you want to run. So here I'm configuring this demo profile group where you can set this periodically to run a test. So over time, if you need this running for maybe an hour, you can set an interval of about maybe a test, run this test every five minutes for a duration of an hour, for example. So you set that there in the environment and then it'll periodically run that test for you, which is good to collect uh, data over time and to analyze it. But what I want to do is not enable that for now, but I, I have different profiles here to run tests. So my first profile is a Wi-Fi profile where I'm connecting to a specific SSID and there's different tests that are being ran here. So when you're connecting to an SSID, the Etherscope will connect to the best signal of that SSID. If you want it to be very specific, you could tell it to connect to a specific BSSID and test against that one. You could even tell it don't test 2.4. Maybe you just want to test 5 gigahertz. So you can't select that here. Otherwise, it's just auto. And then there are different link thresholds that you can set as per your requirements, where whether that's a signal threshold, SNR, and also retries, right? So, so th these are the tests it's going to run against that SSID that you have configured. Now, in addition to just connecting to that SSID, I can run channel tests, which it is already doing as part of the connecting to the SSID, but maybe I want to look at the channel specifically that it's connecting to versus just the SSID. So you can enable, disable these, set your, your thresholds per your requirements, and then you can go back and look at what kind of test it's going to run here. So there's a DNS test, which I have specified what I wanted to do a DNS lookup for, and it'll tell me how long it took to run that, that DNS lookup. It'll do a gateway test, make sure it has connectivity to the gateway. And I have two additional target tests that I have set up where I'm going to pull the HTTP website for google.com and tell me how long it took to do that, as well as just some ping tests uh, for IP addresses. So I've got that configured for that SSID. Now let's say you want to go into an environment and test more than one SSID. That's very possible. You just tap on this plus icon down here below and then click or tap on add Wi-Fi profile. So now you can test against multiple SSIDs. Uh, that way you're not having to do that manually. So I'm going to delete that for now because I don't have it set up. My second test that I'm running here is an air quality profile test. So here again, we're going to look at the channel itself, uh, 802.11 utilization, non-802.11 utilization, as well as co-channel interference. So you can specify your requirements there. If there's a certain number of APs you, you want to be warned about on co-channel, you can set that and also set the failure rate along with the, the signal that it should hear it at. So... As you can see in this in this uh, profile group, it's going to run these two tests sequentially. So it'll run the demo one first, and then the air quality profile second. So now I can save this, 
and do a save as, and you can see I have three other profiles I'm using in order to have different tests. So you can go ahead and click save against that. So I can just save to the same name and it'll overwrite that. So now we go back here and tap on start and it's going to run those tests and it'll run it against the Wi-Fi adapter that it has for testing. There is a separate Wi-Fi adapter just for management on the Etherscope NXG. So let's wait for these tests to run and then we'll come back. It took less than two minutes to run both of these tests. So here we can see there are some warnings and failure thresholds that have been met. So once you do this, this test, you can go in and start looking at them and, and see where those failures were. Okay, so I, uh, it took too long to run this HTTP test, for example, or, or uh, ping wasn't that great. So you can start diving into that and analyzing why that is, especially looking at air quality profile. Maybe there was something there. I had co-channel interference. Uh, a lot of different things you could use uh, to analyze the Wi-Fi network. You can see I connected on channel 36, but channel utilization was, in, was, was pretty good. So a lot of different things, right? So that's auto test. You can dive into that, save your results to link live. My second favorite feature is going to be uh, RF and traffic statistics. So here uh, I'm going to tap on Wi-Fi. And just so you know, you could get to RF and, and traffic statistics through the auto test function as well when you're diving into a channel. So what I'm looking at here is the channels map. The Etherscope is going to scan through every single channel on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and give you a report of how many uh, clients it sees, how many APs, what the utilization is, whether there's non-802.11 utilization that was, uh, that was seen. Uh, but I, what I like to do is look at the SSIDs specifically for what I'm troubleshooting. So here I'm going to tap on frame thrower and I can see, all right, there's three APs seen. We've got uh, BSSIDs. There's six of them. We're on two channels, there's clients. So we can dive into this a little bit further if we go into channels and say, I wanna look at channel one. So now I'm looking specifically at channel one in which my one of my APs is operating on. And down at the bottom, I have RF and traffic statistics. And so it's starting to gather this information over time. And so that's what these little, uh, that those graphs are. You have the signal strength at the top. Uh, that's the first graph you see. And I can drag this bar here to zoom in and look at that time stamp there that it's showing, or I can zoom out and see overall what it's doing. What's really great about the statistics that I get here is I can see what my current signal strength is, the, uh, the minimum uh, and the max, and also the average. So we have a couple of different pieces of data here that we could use in order to troubleshoot. And then you get your SNR as well, right? So I'll, that's a value that you want to look at carefully with your signal strength. And then going down here, looking at, all right, let me, let me see what my channel utilization here is. So on average, it's about 13%. And uh, on average, I'm getting about 4% of some sort of interference here. And so when you look at this data and try to correlate that with whatever devices you are troubleshooting, or maybe it's an application you're troubleshooting, you want to see whether or not RF is going to be an issue, if that's what's preventing something from working the way we expect, right? And then retries is another uh, look at the quality of the Wi-Fi network. And so I will look at average retry rate over a specified amount of time to see if we maybe that's what's causing uh, the Wi-Fi network to be slow. And so we look at that, and there's not much uh, going on as far as retry rate, right? Less than 1% on average while I'm capturing right now. So I like to spend my time here when I'm tr troubleshooting uh, maybe a, a specific area. I go into the channel where the clients are connecting and start looking at this. This little uh, wrench icon here, you could then 
capture frames over Wi-Fi. So maybe you wanted to analyze this a little bit further, get that data. Uh, maybe you do see a lot of retries for whatever reason. You could then go to capture Wi-Fi and start capturing frames. So I won't go into this too much, but that possibility is there. So going back, you could then look at the other um, channels as well. Maybe channel one wasn't what you're looking at, channel six, 36, and start going into that. You can see there's a lot more channel utilization happening as it's starting to gather that, that data. And what about the retry rate? So retry rates are looking a little bit higher. So you want to look into why that is and use the ether scope to maybe help you come to that conclusion. So the third feature that I want to share with you is the air mapper feature. Air mapper is relatively new to NetAlly and it's a way to perform validation surveys. So I'm going to tap on air mapper and right away you see I have a floor plan already um, already loaded here. You could load a floor plan. There's an SD card that is on the ether scope right here. You could transfer that to from your laptop onto the SD card. And then from there, you could load that into here where you go to floor plan and at a level you could, you could add a floor plan here, which will allow you to add a floor plan. So, what I did is I tapped on settings and air mapper. This is the main screen it'll bring you into. So I'll tap on the settings, the gear at the top right. I can give my um, validation survey a name. You can add a description and then add all the floor plans. So here I've got a four level pick mod. And what I want to do for each floor plan is set the dimensions. So you have uh, as accurate as possible when it comes to doing this validation survey. And so you'll use these little markers here to say uh, what the distance is. And I've, uh, I measured this section, this, this section here of the pick mod as 90.2 feet. All right, so do that for each level. So right now I'm currently going to be doing a validation survey for level one. And the signal propagation that I want to um, use is 10 feet. And uh, 10 feet... Uh, I, I, I selected 10 feet because I measured a piece of the pick mod where I know every 10 feet, that's where I'm going to tap on the screen to collect my measurements. So in the current, I'm using current scanning mode here, not scan once. And I'm not going to override any bands or channels. So with this handheld tool, it's going to be simple to just even allow somebody else to do this survey for you. And all they got to do is say uh, zoom in here i'm gonna start here uh, at the near the middle i'm gonna tap on start and i know that here is where i am so you saw that it turned red for a moment there that's doing its scan and i know right about here is 10 feet which is right on the edge of that circle and about every 10 feet i'm gonna tap so i'm gonna walk the distance of 10 feet then I'm going to tap where I am on the floor plan, which is roughly about 10 feet. And this is great because once you're done, I, I tapped on stop. You could share this by using that share icon on the top right and upload it to Link Live. So with Link, Link Live, I could then share this with other people or look at the results on Link Live. That's where I'm going to look at it. And so I'm going to share this with Francois and save it to my air mapper files. And so Air Mapper, I think that's going to be a great tool for using your, um, your single device, again, for troubleshooting, and then now for validating the, the network, you just upload your floor plan. Uh, right now, it looks like it's just a, a stop and go type of survey where I'm going to walk to a destination, stop, tap on the screen, wait for it to gather its results. And once it turns green, a circle, uh, that circle's green, then I'm going to walk to the next location and then tap again. The disadvantage I see there is if you've got a large floor plan like the one that I've I've got here, there's four levels of this, it's going to take a long time to do that survey. So hopefully NetAlly adds a function where you can do a continuous survey as it as you walk, it will continually gather those results for you and you just tap on each turn that you make. 
because otherwise I think it's it's a great application for smaller environments. It's not going to be, um, uh, you know, you're not going to be carrying a lot of USB dongles or a laptop or maybe an iPad with another dongle connected to it. You could send this Etherscope NXG out to somebody else to to run these tests for you, and they could upload it to Link Live. So that those are the three features that my favorite features right now of the Etherscope NXG. It was uh, Air Mapper, which I just showed you, the RF and traffic statistics, taking a look at the ch the channel individually and how RF is doing for further troubleshooting. And then also the auto test. The auto test feature allows me to collect a lot of different data very quickly without having to go and tap into different screens of the Etherscope. So hopefully um, that gives you some familiar familiarity of the Etherscope NXG. If you have any questions about it or comments or, or maybe there's a tip you want to provide, please let me know down in the comments below. But I want to thank you for watching this video.